Everybody, Brandon Mathis here with Smashing Boxes, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about the Watson Developer Cloud Node.js SDK that's been released by the Watson Developer Cloud IBM team and is currently being maintained by them. Uh, I have used this Node.js SDK to build myself a little Slack bot that does image recognition. So this thing is actually pretty cool, um, and what I'm going to build here over the next few minutes uh, along with you is just going to be a small little Slack bot where we're going to upload an image to the Slack channel and then the bot is going to respond back with what it thinks it is in that image and it's going to use the Watson image recognition SDK as the service that will actually do the image recognition part of all of this. So this is really only going to be about 70 something lines of code. It's extremely simple and let's jump right into it. So uh, the first thing that I'll show you guys, I don't really have a lot installed here. Just we have our Slack client. I've got .m to keep all my API keys in there. I have the graceful FS um, uh, NPM, or, yeah, NPM module installed because we actually have to download the image to our local file system and then upload that image to the Watson cloud so it can do the processing part of all of this. And um, uh, obviously the <clears throat> request module is gonna be necessary here to download the image. And then there's the Watson developer cloud node SDK there is the last thing that we need. So um, I'm just install these things really quick. Um, use Yarn, Yarn is crazy fast and awesome and you should totally use it. And I will absolutely plug Yarn while this install is going because it only took nine seconds. So let's jump right into our index.js and see what's going on here. So the first thing you'll notice is I've already done some initial setup. I've already required my modules. I've already set up .ev so we can just jump right into it. So uh, what I've got here is I have RTM running and it's going to watch for any messages that happen in the channel and then things are gonna happen. So just to show you guys what it is that I mean by that. Um, I'll just log out whatever messages I send in that channel right now, since the Slack bot is currently sitting up in there. And if I'm like, hello bot, it's gonna respond. Well, I might wanna actually start things up first, and then I can say, hello bot, and it's just gonna post it um, <clears throat> here in my terminal. So this is how we're gonna follow things along. Usually I would write tests, but for simplicity's sake here and for speed, I'm just gonna use debug prints to show you guys how simple it is to get up and running with the Swanson Developer Cloud. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just some like basic catch-alls. Um, you know, I wanna, if, the, um, if there's no text or if the message is sent from um, uh, whoever the bot user is or something, uh, I want this thing to stop. So let's just throw some really simple code in here. Uh, not that big of a deal. I already just copy and paste this over from a previous version of this that I built. And um, we're going to get right into this. So the first thing that you're going to notice is whenever you actually post an image to Slack, it surrounds the things with these brackets and we have to get rid of those things. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If I take an image of a cat here and let's do this cat. Do the image. That's a good image. If we send that up there, um, well, let's actually log out what we're looking at here. Um, so as you can see here, there's the, just bump that over a bit. Uh, see how it's surrounded by these braces? Gotta get rid of that request. The request module is just gonna um, barf all over us if it sees those things. So let's say um, permalink equals message dot text replace. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Cool. So now we're just only going to get the URL and now we can jump right into this stuff. Now, I definitely want to say like if um, permalink link.match <coughs> HTTP. Uh, I definitely want to make sure it has HTTP at the beginning or HTTPS, whatever. And that I'm a permalink, permalink. Match. Just ignore that error over there for now. And then I want to make sure that the extension is a PNG or a GIF or a JPEG, or a JPEG. Um, yeah, end of the end of the match right there, end of the string. So 
So let's see where we're at now. Um, I should be able to post any link in here that I want. Um, something that you'll notice right away is the Slack RTM API like saves the last message that it received, and if it doesn't respond, it just kind of like reprocesses that message when NodeMod starts up. So as you can see here, I mean, I, I can tell you things are working correctly because of that, but there's the link again. But if I say hello or something like that, we're not going to get anything. So that's working great. And right here is where we're going to start the entire process of downloading the image, saving it to our file system, and sending it to Watson. So first things first, um, I want to create a file name where we're going to save that image. Let's save it to our temp directory, math.random, to string. Let's only get the first few characters of that, path dot x name permalink because um, I want to preserve if it's a PNG, GIF, JPEG, something like that, some image. Um, next thing that we'll do is we're going to actually send out a request here. Um, URI is going to be the permalink and then I'm, uh, I'm going to pipe that directly into this FS. Um, it's called create write stream uh, to actually like dump this all out into a file. So that's the file that's going to go in, going to send it into temp, and then whenever it closes, we're going to call a function down here. And this is where we're actually going to be doing the um, uh, the processing. So let's like make sure that the file is actually being saved on our file system. So it's going to probably use that same request that it used last time here. Mm. Maybe not this time. Always a little bit tricky, but there it is. So um, I could open this file here. So I just open that in my local directory. And if you've never seen something like this before, if you use iTerm and you mouse over something and you hit com and you hold Command, uh, links become clickable, and you can click and like go to things. You can search for stuff, um, but it will definitely work on your local file system. So there it is. There's the image saved on my machine, and so now I can actually do stuff. With that, you can also open up remote images with this too. I use this all the time. So anyway, uh, no more console log there. Let's actually say like we have a function called recognize that's going to handle all this watch and stuff. And it's going to return a promise. And always catch your promises. Oh man. There we go. Uh, console log error. Okay, good. So we're going to log the error out, catch that stuff, and then here inside the response, we're going to do some things. We're going to be like, you know, post, message, and Slack. So, like, let's just sit tight there for a hot minute. And actually, better than that, Let's um, console log out the actual response that we get from Watson. So <clears throat> let's see here. Function um, recognize image. And this is actually all this code that I'm going to write here inside this function is actually pretty readily available for you right here inside of the visual recognition portion of the Watson Node SDK uh, developer cloud readme that's on GitHub. And so really like this is all the information that it is that I'm going to use. So we're just going to write this out. It's not going to be a big deal. Um, by the way, you'll notice that you need an API key to get into this. Um, Watson only runs on IBM Bluemix. But Bluemix has provided a 30-day free trial that you can use at any time. So what I've done is I've actually already registered myself a free trial. And it's very, very easy to get started up with the Watson service. You just say, um, this guy like loaded something up. But you just say create app. And then you would go into visual. Like you can search visual, click visual recognition. Um, uh, it's going to take you to this page where it's going to give you some information about the visual recognition service that Watson provides, details and credentials, and 
you know, all kinds of stuff, similar image search, facial detection, things like that, visual training, all these things. But, you know, what you're going to probably just, if you want to get right to your API key, just click create and it's going to create the API key. Um, I'm not going to do that here. I've already created my API key before I initially started the screencast. So um, that's saved in my .env file. I'm going to keep that secret and safe and yeah, let's start with actually calling or initializing a new instance of the visual recognition class that we get. So constant visual recognition, let's say equals the visual recognition v3, which we're getting from up here. Um, uh, we're going to call that, well, we need to give it um, credentials. API key, this is going to be process.in. Uh, Watson key is what I set this up for and then the version date I, I, I really I don't know what this is about but this is something that's required as a part of the setup and you just give it this arbitrary date and I, I just I don't know why and I don't know what it's for but I do know that the visual recognition service won't work without it so uh, I didn't really dig too deep into the documentation to figure out why you need it but I mean it's also right there 2006 0519 so um, you know, maybe that's a, maybe there's something specific there. I mean, I put 20, maybe you have to put any kind of date. I, I'm again, not sure what it is that that does, but uh, not really important for the sake of this example. So let's just like give it some params that we are going to pass along to Watson, uh, whenever we do finally make the visual recognition classify call. And so I'm going to do fs.createReadStream here, and this is where the actual path to that image is going to go because that's what we pass up here and recognize we actually give it a path to the image. Um, then I save it, and then I reread it up and send it out there. Probably a more elegant way to do this, but um, this is just the way that I'm handling it for now. And then let's return ourselves a new promise. So return new promise. Resolve, reject, and then visual recognition that classify params function error response. Um, and then obviously, if there's an error. We'll reject with the error, else we will resolve with the response. So, ah, and I have just a couple, I've got a little cleanup needs to take place right there. So, okay, so that's it. That's pretty much exactly the code that we have in place here. Um, Obviously, I implemented a promised version of this. I don't have this callback format here, um, but you know you can obviously do this however it is that you want. So the next step that we're going to go into is we're actually going to build the Slack response. But before we get to that, I want to actually see is are the images that I'm going to send up to this bot are they getting downloaded to my system and then sent to Watson and then is Watson giving us a response back? So let's see what happens. Um, Oh, it looks like I missed a keyword here. There we go. So let's give us a new image here. So, um, okay, excellent. So this is what the response object originally looks like whenever you debug it out into your terminal. Um, I, I, I don't want to use a pretty printer to just like expand these objects out as far as possible because there are a lot, a lot, a lot of nested objects in here. Okay, this is a very complex object that you get back from Watson and I totally suggest you digging into this thing and inspecting what all the elements are that are in here. But um, long story short is essentially um, Watson is going to send you back multiple classes of some type of thing that it thinks is in that image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the very first class in the list as the primary class that I'll actually say in this message up here where it says, looks like you posted an image with a tabby cat in it. 
Tabby Cat is the name of the class. So I'm going to use that as the primary class, and the rest of these are going to be fields that I'm going to put in the Slack response as a part of, you know, just additional information that it thinks that it sees. I could order these by the score and things like that, but um, Watson is really, really good at coming back with the very first class being the thing that it is that it really, really, really thinks it's in there, despite the score possibly being higher for other classes that it recognizes. So um, that's a really nice, helpful thing that Watson gives us. So let's see here. Um, so this is going to be uh, a little bit of code to actually get uh, up and going. Um, but the first thing is I want to get my primary class. And I want to get my secondary classes um, as the tail of this array. So I'm going to initialize myself. I'm a uh, head and a tail of an array, and then I'm going to say that my response dot images. I'm only going to give it one image. You could upload multiple images too. Um, I'm guessing because it gives you back. It acts like there's an array present or something here. Um, and then I want the first classifier, and then classes. All the classes that are in there, and then that array is going to be split for me as a head and a tail. And then I'm going to use the head item as the first thing that it responds to. But first, let's take care of all the items that are in the tail as fields. So um, const um, fields equals secondary classes map a class. Um, so what fields are in a Slack response are essentially these things right here. Um, in a Slack bot response, whenever you structure a response, you actually have the text of the response. You have the, you ha you can set the title of it. You can put images in. You can have interactive buttons. And one thing you can have are fields, and they work really well for me for this example because this is exactly the kind of inf the information that I want to display. So you can look at the Slack API documentation and read up all about the different ways that you can structure a message. But I already know what it is that I want here, and that is that um, I want some short fields by giving it this short attribute. Um, I'm a, well, actually, I want to return some object. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to say that the field is going to be a short field, and that means that I can have two columns of fields side by side. So that'll be really nice. Um, make it, you know, make the message response a lot cleaner, a lot smaller. Um, the title is going to be the class that it hits on whenever it's iterating, and there's an attribute in there just called class. We're going to use that. And then value it's a score that you get in here. So I'm going to say I want that score, and I'm going to multiply it by 100 so it like looks like a percentage instead of just some decimal number, right? So let's make sure that we <clears throat> wrap that up. Um, okay, so we've got our field set up. Let's just take a look at what we're getting back here. So let's, I'm going to throw the same image up there again and Oh, can't read property. So I do this all the time and misspell things. Especially the word classifiers. I really like to misspell that one. So let's try this again. So I upload an image and fingers crossed this guy should be coming back with, with something, but I've got a bit of a problem here. Hmm. So let's see what our response is. So we're getting a response. Um, we're getting, I'm pretty sure we're getting a primary class as well. So we're getting a primary class of a Persian cat from the image that we've originally given it. But when I get it fields here, is that because I'm inside the map? Yes, it is, and I'm returning. Well, well, well. That was silly. So what we're going to get here is I want to actually like show you guys what the fields are that are going to be coming back. So what we, all this is just an array of objects that have that short, the title, the value, the percentages are set up. Everything looks great. 
So let's jump into actually crafting the slack response. Um, as user is true because I do want it to respond as if it is like the bot user. Uh, you can read into that option if you want. Attachments. Um, color. So I want this like, I I'm going to format this a little bit. I want this blue bar here over to the side. I want a message, other things I see, etc., etc. So let's stick with the IBM blue, which is like 466 BBO. Um, title. Uh, looks like, oh no, looks like you posted an image with a primary class class in it. And then, so that's the bold text is at the top and I'm gonna say um, other things I see. And then that's where the fields will come in. So that's our Slack response, uh, pretty standard formatted Slack response with something that has a bunch of fields in it. Um, and I mean, this this works really nice with like the structure of how Watson talks back to you anyway. So that's really great. Um, and the thing is, is that we can't use the RTM post message function to actually send this response back because for some reason the node SDK um, uh, RTM portion of the node SDK specifically doesn't support attachments. It's kind of a little bit of an ongoing problem. So we have to use the web client, which really isn't that big of a deal. Um, just web chat, post message, message, uh, and we'll use the same channel that the message was originally posted in. Um, there's our Slack response. And then if we error, console log error. Great. So uh, without any further ado, that really should be it. And this thing should start responding with some messages. Um, there's that response, there's that original response. And I mean, like I told you before, uh, RTM like seems to keep the last message it received and hold it uh, if you didn't respond or something like that. So um, let's use an original image. Let's actually just use the image that's um, open image a new tab. Let's just like use the image that's right here uh, from Watson. So, um, oh, so that's actually not going to work because it needs to have .jpg at the end. So let's not use that image. Let's use another image of a cat. Let's use this image of this cat. Oh, that's a pretty big image. That's a big image. Oh, that's a small image. Look at that. Excellent. Let's use this one. So there's the image of the cat. Super duper fast in terms of response time because the image is so slow. I mean, really 90% of the time that you're looking at here in terms of like actual processing is gonna be in how fast you can move these images through the internet. Um, so I could probably cut the time in half for large images for large images if I didn't download them to my file system and then reread them out to Watson if I actually like handled that binary data um, uh, just as a separate thing and sent it along. But yeah, you can see here, um, I mean, it thinks it sees a Siamese cat, domestic cat, carnival, a tom cat, maybe a young cat, a kitten, a tortoise shell cat, <laughs> some beige color. But I mean, it won't just do cats. It'll do, um, uh, you know, it'll do elephants. So let's get kind of a small image of an elephant here. Um, this will work great for an elephant image. It didn't unfurl this one because I've posted this image before in this channel, but let's try one that I haven't posted yet. So you, you, you have to watch the image size here. When I mouse over these things, I'm being careful to check the image size before I actually try to use it because um, if the image is over three megabytes, Watson will reject it and won't process it. So that's kind of, um, uh, you know, three megabytes seems reasonable. So compress your images down, scale the resolution down. Um, uh, if you're going to be sending these things along to Watson to 
maybe half size if you're at three megs. But as you can see here, for this small image of these elephants, it was um, uh, really good at, I see an image with a velt in it. Is that what you call a group of elephants? And I don't know what, I'm not 100% sure what a veld is. Um, oh, a grass field somewhere in Southern Africa. Well, that's really interesting because that's exactly what it is that we're looking at here. So, um, uh, you know, there's just really no end to the different um, uh, types of images or just things that Watson will recognize out of the box. Um, uh, you know, I might say a puma. Um, it's going to say it's a panther, which is, I mean, that's pretty interesting there. Um, uh, let's see if I have another image that I haven't used before. Oh, so this is a bigger size image. Downloaded it directly on my computer. Oh, that's terrible. Um, oh, here's a little, like, baby cheetah. Is that image too big? Let's see. This image might be too big. So as you can see here, our bot is just going to like maybe break. Oh, it's not too big. So it, it sees a cub in here, might be some kind of wildcat, what have you. It looks like a, um, uh, it, it, it does look like a leopard to me, maybe a cheetah. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but cheetah. I mean, it'll do recognition for like these cheetahs, let's say. I mean, it, it, it really is just uh, absolutely flabbergasting how well that this bot, or I'm sorry, that Watson is trained for image recognition for animals. It, it actually is quite impressive. So um, having some troubles with this image specifically. You know, I mean, I don't have a lot of protections around this bot right now. So, you know, if like hot linking or like linking to an image is like broken or something, or if I try to download it and it had a problem, you know, there's no way for me to tell, but I mean, this is only 78 lines of code that we've written here, and already I've got, I can upload any arbitrary image, and it'll just do image recognition, and I think that's just really cool. Um, you know, as you can see here, at the end of everything, we're all said and done, 77 lines of code for a fully connected Slack bot that's doing image recognitions based off of links that you post in Slack. And I mean, the actual image recognition code is even smaller than that. And you can train Watson to recognize anything you want. So if you want it to recognize specific types of cars, if you want it to recognize um, specific styles of buildings, trees, leaves, who knows, you know, maybe you're an avid bird watcher and you want to take a picture of a bird and immediately be told what kind of bird it is and information about it. This is what I would, this is the direction that I would take things to be able to actually do that. And I mean, there really is something else. So um, I strongly encourage you to download this Node SDK, and give it a try and uh, have fun. Thanks for joining.